Question 7 says the sinusoidal wave shown in the figure below is traveling in the positive x direction and has a frequency of 14.5 Hz. A. Find the amplitude. B. Find the wavelength. C. Find the period. And D. Find the speed of the wave. So first of all, the amplitude of the wave. So if we take this point of origin from where the wave starts, we're going to call this point the equilibrium point. Because this corresponds, uh, a wave corresponds to things like the movement of, of an object between two springs, the movement of a pendulum. There's always a point where the force, the force is at equilibrium. And so that's what this point is right here, where the force of the wave is at equilibrium. Um, however, the momentum carries it further. So that's why you always overshoot equilibrium is because the momentum. Uh, and so I'm speaking, of course, of a spring system and, and of a pendulum system. It's the momentum that always carries it past this equilibrium point. So we always measure amplitude from the equilibrium point. How far am I from equilibrium? That's what amplitude is. And so over here, the, the problem says that this, uh, this section right here is 8.2 centimeters. Uh, so 8.2 centimeters from peak to trough. So from the distance from peak to trough, Peak to trough is always two times higher than the amplitude. So the amplitude could be measured here, the amplitude here. Um, it's the absolute value of this um, distance from equilibrium. And so the amplitude is, in this case, is going to be equal to 8.26 divided by 2, which is equal to 4.13 centimeters. Then it says find the wavelength. Well, the wavelength is is the point at which um, two, two identical points on a wave that are acting identically. And so if I were to draw a line, let's say I have this line from here to here. These two points are identical and they're going to act identically. So what that, what that means is as this point drops down, this point also drops down. When this point gets to a point where it starts coming back up, this one also starts coming back up. So these two points are acting identically. If, on the other hand, I were to draw a line from here to here, these two points, although they're at identical um, uh, y locations, they are not acting identically. This one is falling down, this one is going up. So they're not acting identically. So the wavelength is the closest point on, on a wave where you have two points at the same height and they act identically. And so you could also draw a wavelength. The wavelength would go from here to here. This is also a wavelength and it's equal to this distance right here. And so it's the distance. We, we measure wavelength either from peak to peak, typically, or from trough to trough. Well, right here we have the distance from a peak to its, its uh, closest trough. And so that's half the distance of trough to tr or from peak to peak. So this, if I take 5.2 times 2, this is going to equal my wavelength. And so that's going to equal 10.4 centimeters. Now the problem tells us that we have a, a frequency of 14.5 hertz. So the frequency is equal to 14.5 Hertz. Now what is the frequency? So if we take the, the period, the period is the time that it takes the wave to get one wavelength. So from here to here, that's one period. So that's, it's the time to, to start at one location and arrive back at that same location. So it, it's one wavelength. That's what a period is. So, so T equals the time of one, of one wave of one wavelength. And so the frequency, frequency is defined as 1 over t. So whatever unit of time we're using to measure t, so say if it's in seconds, then the frequency is telling us how many complete wavelengths we get in one second. So for every second, how many wavelengths do we get? So if t is greater than 1, we're going to have less than 1 wavelength per second. On the other hand, if t is, is 0.5, then we'll get two waves per second. So the, the lower the time it takes uh, for, the, for this to go from here to here, the more that we get every second. So that's what frequency is telling us. How many waves, complete wavelengths, do we get per second? 
And so it tells us to, t to find the period. So I'm going to uh, come down here, and so if I solve, if I solve this equation, I can say that um, for t, I can say that t equals 1 over the frequency. And so if the frequency is 14.5, then 1 over 14.5 is equal to 0 0.06. Eight nine six six, and that's in units of seconds. And so that's that's the answer part C. And then it says find the speed of the wave. So how fast is this wave going? Well, here's what we got to do. Uh, the the distance of one wavelength we decided it was ten centimeters. Let's, we're going to say in approximately it's approximately ten centimeters from here to here. And the time and how many of these do I get? per second. I get 14 of these every second. So every second I get 14 10 centimeter waves. And so the speed, the, the velocity of this wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So and I think wavelength I can I can make that a lambda. The the Greek lambda looks like that. So the velocity equals the frequency times lambda where the lambda is the wavelength and so I can say 14 Point five, and and the thing is, it wants the the units for this thing in meters per second. So if I have ten point four centimeters, then I have to times this by zero point zero point one zero four meters. And so the the speed of this wave is one point five zero eight meters per second.